Hey everybody and welcome to the shop. My name is Grant and I'm a boat builder in Northern Michigan. Today we're going to be assembling the frames. I've already roughed out all of these frames so hopefully this episode moves a little bit faster than what the last one did but I still want to explain my particular procedure for doing that. Enough gabbing, let's get to it. Back on our lofting floor we will be making this next and I cut this down to my dimension and height and just had a whole bunch of them sitting by ready to go. Then I took my pattern, flipped it over on the lofting, lined up my center line, tacked it into place. And using the smaller side of the frame, since we cut these as standing bevels, this is our station face, set that on the pattern and set this one on the plank reduction on this side, just laid my stock which was run long on top of these and just made a tick mark on the corners and connected the two dots and cut that end. I usually only work one side at a time in case if I screw that up I can kind of shift it over make sure I'm happy there then I would add a center line and then do the other side. When you lay this across here to make those tick marks I like to use something heavy. I just have old coffee can filled full of uh, nails or whatever. It's kind of heavy to keep these from moving around so I get the most accurate layout. Once you have that cut and fitted, everything's happy. Then you can come back down here to the center line and measure out the dimensions for the keelson. This boat has a four inch keelson, which same purpose as a keel, just on the inside of the boat instead of outside gives the bottom support down the length of the boat. Outside of the keelson, I extended this a little bit to have limber holes. Some people would call them scuppers. That's not really a true term in this particular situation. Limber holes are on the inside of the boat. Scuppers are typically a deck drain. Just clear that up. The other thing while we're talking terms, this is called a floor timber. Uh, Simple explanation, floor timber holds the sides to the bottom. Just a, a means of connecting that. The next thing that I did on this, once that was fitted, was I came in and I set squares on my water line, making sure everything's still where it needs to be. Put squares on the water line and brought a level so I had enough length to go all the way across and then transferred that water line up onto the frames. That way everything's got a good point of reference. Then I took this whole assembly and actually put it out on a chunk of plywood at a arbitrarily 45 degree angle to create the gussets. These are half inch marine grade plywood. This whole boat's built with uh, plywood. From the bottom plank's gonna be plywood, the bottom will be plywood. So all of this is gonna be sealed in epoxy, but I laid them on there with the wider side of the frames down on uh, the plywood. That way, you think of how the boat comes together at the bow, it's gonna be pulling against this and pushing on the other side. I'm only gonna be using one gusset. Um, some builders like to have a gusset on both sides and they'll put a little filler block inside here. Um, I'll try and leave a link down in the description of a video that was done by Mark Rutten where he's making these awesome video and he goes in more depth than what I'm doing with this. So go check that out. But I got that lined up pretty easily just by measuring out the distance here and here and I, I picked seven inches it looked right to me squared up and then squared in and just made sure I had a little tick mark on the face as that's how I knew where to cut it to create this angle so I made both of those like that and you're pretty well caught up I just realized that I didn't mention while we're at the lofting floor to assemble everything right there on the floor. That way you know everything is where it needs to be. You can put the gusset down and drill all of these out, 
making sure you have the appropriate countersink and everything. And doing it that way, I have all of these screw holes that are gonna pull all of this back to its original position. The other thing I'll mention is the sides of these gussets on the side and bottom, they're cut a touch strong. So when I go and actually start putting the boat together, I can kind of fare these in. And if I get a gap, because I cut all these square, if I get a gap in here, um, we'll put a, a fillet of epoxy in here and it'll get filled in and kind of naturally fare itself if there is a gap there. And I'll show you a little trick up here where there's going to be a plank lap. Uh, so you actually aren't gluing this to the second plank. It should just be glued to the bottom plank. Hopefully that clears that up. The next steps that we need to do on this, and it's kind of an afterthought on my part, so now i got to play catch up, is I need to put a little radius up here on the top. So this isn't such a sharp corner because sharp corners in a boat are a bad thing. And then we're gonna round over the edges on the gusset and the edges on the frames and the floor. I'm going to be using Total Boats 5 to 1 traditional epoxy for this whole project. I really like the slow hardener in summer temperatures. Unfortunately, I'm still filming everything with a single camera, so I'm not able to move it around while I have this batch of epoxy going off. What you see me doing here is wetting all the components out with an unthickened epoxy. This way I know I have a good penetration of the wood fibers and I'll have a good bond when I actually screw everything together. And then I go and add a thickened batch of epoxy over that to make sure I have a good bond in any voids that might have been in there. I don't expect there's anything there, but this way I'm plenty secure in everything that I'm doing. I also used oversized fasteners when doing this. They were just what was available on the shelf and they'll definitely get the job done. After I attached the gussets to the frames with screws, I flipped them over and using what was left of the thickened epoxy, I made fillets on the inside between the gusset and the frame and floor. This way I know I have a good bond between all three components and also this has the added benefit of shedding any water or dirt that might try to collect in that area. I tried to make the fillets wide enough so it goes almost to the edge of the frame and floor just for that purpose. So I think this is a great opportunity to stop and say thank you to you the viewers for taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. I really appreciate it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you're liking what you're seeing or leave me a comment down below. If you haven't, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And when you do, hit that little bell icon down in the corner and that way you know when the next video comes out. Another thing to note is I'm using a ton of Total Boat products on this build. They were nice enough to set me up with a ton of stuff for this build. They've been a fantastic company to work with. Just thought I should have that disclosure in there. And yeah, go check them out. I'll make sure there's a link down below and you can get any one of these products that I'm using and I would highly recommend you do so. Let's get back to work. With all the frame sanded, the next thing I'm gonna do is use Total Boat's Total Fair. This is a epoxy-based fairing filler. Um, I've never tried this one before. I've used others, and if this is anything like 
other total boat products i have complete faith in this this is going to be awesome uh, mixes on a one-to-one -one ratio um, so just equal parts keep things simple i like that since it is an epoxy uh, you want to make sure you have gloves on because it's easy to create a sensitivity if you get it on your skin uh, over time you'll start to react to it and I don't know about you, but I want to build boats for a good long time, so I make sure I always have a pair of gloves on when I'm using epoxies. One thing you want to consider when you're using epoxies is it is nothing like a polyester or a vinyl ester type uh, material. Those ones, you can add more of the hardener to uh, speed up the cure time. You do not mix the amount on the ratio when you're using an epoxy. It has to be as close as you can get it to the appropriate combination. So this stuff comes in blue and yellow. You get your even parts out here and it's going to be pretty close. You just mix this all out on a scrap of wood until you get a nice even green color. I'm just going to use a little bit like that and go in to these screw holes, kind of give them a press from different directions. Just to make sure I have all of that filled in. You notice I've got a little rise right there. I'm okay with that. Pick up a little bit more. Better to leave it a little proud and sand it back down. With all of the uh, frames covered in filler on those screws, I'm gonna call this video quits and try and get this one out as quickly as possible. I, I could wait and film more, but you've already seen me sand them once. So yeah, we will probably be jumping into the center line on the next video, either that or the strong back. I've got to see where things balance out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And when you do, hit that little bell icon down in the corner and you'll know when the next video comes out. As always, give it a thumbs up. We will see you on the next one.